Hello everyone, welcome to the NPTEL online certification course on fundamentals of food process engineering. We will continue with the topic of freeze drying today. We have seen in the last class that uh, what is the basic idea behind freeze drying that we need to perform the freeze drying below the condition of the triple point of water that is below 611.73 Pascal pressure and 0.01 degree Celsius temperature. In that condition we directly convert the ice crystal to uh, vapor state, we convert them to vapor state and then we try to take out that moisture from the product. So, we will see how this uh, you know transport of heat and mass that happen in case of a freeze drying. So, in case of freeze drying, uh, let us say first we have a food sample and we first uh, freeze it by lowering the temperature. Okay. So, all the moisture in the in the food become frozen converted to ice okay. and after that we will apply a heat source, we will apply heat to the material. So, that uh, as the heat will be transferred to the frozen layer, it will directly sublime under that uh, reduced vacuum condition and that will be uh, taken out by a uh, vacuum pump. Now, what happened that uh, you know when uh, this uh, sublimation takes place that means, when we convert this ice to vapor at the reduced pressure then specific volume of the that vapor will increase enormously. Okay. So, to take out all the vapors using a vacuum pump will require a very high capacity, very large capacity of the pump. right? So, therefore, it has been uh, you know designed in such a way that this vapor will come in contact with the condenser and there it will again uh, form the ice crystal and then it can be taken out from the condenser. So, this is how it happens. So, as the, as the uh, ice crystal will be sublime, there will be a dry layer Okay, and gradually this ice front will recede to the center. It depends on the configuration and geometry where we keep this product. Okay. So, if the drying is taking place from one side or all the side or from top and bottom. So, uh, based on the configuration of, of the freeze dryer, uh, we can define the uh, you know dry layer section and the ice crystal or the frozen portion. And, uh, we can see then the heat transfer first. So, what happened that the interface between the frozen zone and the dry zone which is called the sublimation front. So, first case uh, we will look into this, this diagram where the deeper line is of the heat transfer, the deep black line and the lighter line is showing the mass transfer. So, heat transfer through the frozen layer that means, heat is conducting through the frozen layer. So, here the conductivity of the frozen material will uh, play the param as a parameter in the transfer of heat and then this will going to the, the dry layer and eventually the uh, moisture or the ice will be sublime directly. So, that layer will eventually getting dried. Okay. So, this layer, this layer is eventually it was initially you know completely frozen, completely frozen. So, as the uh, heat is coming and it has uh, it, it is going from this. So, mass transfer is taking from the top side. So, it is gradually the sublimation front is receding backward. Now, Next is heat transfer from hot surface through dry layer. So, if it happens that the mechanism is such that or the configuration in such that the, the product is getting heat from both the side. Okay. So, then what happened that 
as it is it is coming from the dry layer so the conductivity again will be different for the dry layer so the rate of heat transfer from the source to the frozen layer will be different rate transfer in the case in the first case and the second case will be different and then it is getting dried from both the side so eventually uh, the time recurvent will be actually half because from both the side we are we are drying it so when we reach the center it will be dried from both the side okay so that's why mass transfer is in the uh, reverse direction of the heat transfer now uh, in the third case heat generated in ice by microwave okay so heat generation if it by microwave we know that microwave causes volumetric heat generation internal heat generation because of uh, dielectric uh, property of the of the material uh, here it is for the moisture so what will happen that internally the heat generation will be there and because of that the mass transfer will be towards both the direction and of course in this case it will be um, you know uh, depending on the on the property depending on the dielectric property of the material how much heat will be evolved in the internal uh, internal section and that will govern the uh, you know rate of heat transfer for sublimation okay so in those cases in all the cases actually uh, the rate of heat transfer is very important because that will cause the sublimation and that will again govern by whether the heat is coming through the frozen layer or through the dry layer or for the internal volumetric heat generation now rate of mass transfer so moisture content falls from the initial high level in the frozen zone to the lower level in the dried layer okay so if uh, we want to see here the change in the temperature which which is shown in the dotted line the change in the temperature and moisture content along the line so what will happen in in this particular case the temperature is uh, reducing from both the side that means we are providing heat from both the side okay uh, if we consider this whole as a as a uh, you know total slab of the material so the dotted line since it is it is reducing from both the sides so it shows that the temperature or the heat is given to the material from both the side and it is coming through the dry layer because the the moisture profile is like this okay so that means so that means the moisture in the in the center is high and at the surface it has been reduced so that means it is getting dried from both the layer and eventually when it reaches the center line that means the drying front will completely uh, merge from both the side and the product will be dried now if we look into this uh, this transfer from the frozen to the dry it's kind of a step function so the the moisture content from very high to a very low value it, it is suddenly uh, dropped to that that condition it's it's not uh, kind of a gradual transition so it is it is an abrupt transition because of the sublimation so drying kinetics model now what we can do as uh, most of the cases for this drying uh, for this kinetics development we will consider we will try to consider a steady state case that means whatever uh, heat we are providing to the frozen layer that will be utilized for sublimation of the uh, ice front and we consider of course uh, no heat loss and a homogeneous slab we have taken here of frozen food and we will calculate the freeze drying time of the slab so our assumption will be the slab is dried from one side only both heat and mass transfer are unidirectional heat is supplied to the surface of the slab by radiation from a hot surface at a 
distance from the slab. All the heat supplied is used exclusively for the sublimation of ice crystal. As long as sublimation occur, sensible heat effects are negligible. So, there is a sharp sublimation front between the totally iceless or dry zone and the frozen zone that we have already seen that this kind of a step function or there is a sharp sublimation front exist and the vapor are condensed on a cold surface or condenser as ice. The resistance of the chamber space between the slab surface and the condenser to mass transfer is negligible because of the high vacuum. Hence, the water vapor pressure at the condenser surface is nearly equal to that measures in the chamber because there is a high vacuum and we will presume that it will be instantly get getting uh, extracted from the chamber. So, as we have seen that uh, we, we can see here three distinct process will happen first is uh, freezing or formation of ice because of uh, lowering of temperature. Okay. And after that sublimation because we keep it in vacuum and as we provide uh, this uh, as, as we provide the uh, little heat it will directly sublime at that reduced pressure condition and then what we need to have removal of that removal of ice. crystals. Okay. So, sometime it has been taken as the uh, you know primary drying and secondary drying uh, condition. So, here the whole process will complete unless we can remove only sublimation I mean when we do sublimation as I have mentioned that because of very large amount of uh, specific volume of, of that vapor at reduced pressure. It will, it will be difficult to take out all that uh, if we, if we cannot use a very high capacity vacuum pump. Therefore, that has been uh, removed uh, by using a condenser that has been first comes in contact with the condenser, they will form ice crystal and then that will be again removed. So, uh, because of that vacuum we are consi consi considering that the resistance of the chamber space between the slab surface and the condenser to mass transfer is negligible. So, the water vapor press pressure at the condenser surface is nearly equal to the that measure in the chamber. The temperature at the slab surface is kept constant by controlling the temperature of the radiating body. So, the temperature of the frozen product and Hence, the sublimation front is constant because uh, we are making that constant by uh, controlling the source of radiation. The gas in the freeze dryer chamber consists practically of water vapor only because it is a very high vacuum. So, we are not expecting any other gases to be present there. The proportion of non condensable that is air that is negligible in that condition. So, what will happen that uh, we are drying from one side only as we have mentioned. So, it is uh, it is coming through the dry heat is coming through the dry zone to the frozen zone and mass is transferred uh, through that dry layer only. So, we can consider that with every instant some amount of distance we, we can uh, I mean that that frozen layer can recede some amount of distance very small amount of distance with a small time that will be the first basis of removal of this ice. So, we will consider that an incremental thickness d z of the slab is dried in time increment d t. Okay. So, we consider that very small amount d z amount of uh, layer has been frozen within a time d t. So, we can write that what will be the amount of 
water removal per unit time. So, for that what we need? We need the surface area across which this happen multiplied with d z by d t that is how much uh, how much distance the ice front or the drying front is moving sublimation, sublimation front is moving with time d t and we need to multiply it with the density. So, that we are getting uh, kg uh, in terms of kg kg of the water per per unit time multiplied with the initial and final moisture content of the product. So, then we are getting that how much amount of the uh, you know product will be how much amount of moisture will be evaporated. Okay. So, because the density of the food multiplied with the moisture content at initial and final uh, final condition. So, that will give us the amount of moisture evaporated in per unit time. Now, this uh, this amount of moisture that needs to evaporate. So, therefore, we need to uh, we need to multiply with this the latent heat of uh, sublimation that is required. So, that the amount of heat transfer needed can be calculated. So, at steady state the rate of sublimation must be in accordance both with the rate of heat transfer to the sublimation front and with the rate of mass transfer from the sublimation front. So, let us consider the heat transfer first. The rate of heat supply Q in joule per second must be equal to the rate of sublimation multiplied by the latent heat of sublimation. So, we are just multiplying with all the dW by dt factor that we have calculated in the last slide multiplied with lambda s. Q is given by rate of conductive heat transport rate of conductive transport from the slab surface to the sublimation front through the dry layer because we have seen that it is from the from one side only. So, uh, here the dry uh, here the uh, frozen layer is that and this is the dry layer. So, heat is coming through the dry layer and the mass is going out. Okay. So, therefore, uh, next is the heat conducted through this layer if the thickness of the layer is z if the thickness of the layer is z through which the heat is coming. So, k a into initial temperature T 0 minus T i by z where T i is the temperature of the slab surface at the sublimation uh, sorry T 0 and T i temperature at the slab surface and at the sublimation front. So, T i is at the sublimation front and T 0 is the initial condition. So, this we are getting now we need to equate this to find the time. So, for this equation if we integrate from z equal to 0 at time t 0 to z equal to z at time t we can get t equal to z square w i minus w f divided by 2 into t 0 minus t i into rho i lambda s by k. Okay. So, now if we consider the mass transfer at steady state the rate of sublimation must be equal to the rate of removal of the vapors by mass transfer through the dry layer. So, what will happen that mass transfer will cause because of the pressure differential partial pressure differential of the water in the ice front and in the uh, dry layer or in the outside. So, for that this amount of mass transfer can be equated with capital pi A p i minus p 0 by z where this capital pi is uh, signifies here the permeability of the dry layer to water vapor. 
So, permeability uh, generally we express that in terms of diffusivity multiplied with the solubility. So, permeability expressed in kg per second per meter per Pascal pressure differential. P i and P 0 is the water vapor pressure at the sublimation front and the slab surface. So, P i is at the sublimation front and P 0 is at the uh, slab surface. Okay. Slab surface that means, in the uh, in the interface of the dry layer and the ambient condition or the vacuum condition. Okay. So, from these uh, the first first one the first equation where we have related the uh, heat transfer with the amount of moisture removal and time. So, there we have found that T that is the uh, time required for freeze drying has a linear relation with thickness z square. Okay. That means, that if thickness varies significantly this will vary okay. and it also has a inverse relation with conductivity and the temperature inverse relation with the temperature gradient and direct relation with the moisture differential in the in the slab surface and the frozen layer. So, we from this we can get the idea that which parameter will going to affect the time in what way and accordingly we can optimize the freeze drying time. And in the second case we have seen that what will be the permeability of the dry uh, permeability of the dry layer to water vapor because whatever moisture will be evaporated that has to go through the dry layer to uh, you know completely come out in the in the chamber and then from there to the uh, condenser right so here also after integrating uh, we are getting this that T will be equal to z square w i minus w f by 2 into p i minus p 0. Here also we are integrating within uh, z equal to 0 at t equal to 0 to z equal to z at t equal to time t. So, here we are getting this factor multiplied with rho i by capital pi. So, an expression defining the condition for steady state is given as follows where p i minus p 0 by t 0 minus t i that will be equal to k by pi into lambda s. Okay. So, this we are we can get this expression from both the uh, equation of time where one once we relate the time uh, from the heat transfer and in another case we are relating the time with the moisture permeation through the dry layer. So, with these two we can get this expression. So, T 0 that is equal to T i plus capital pi into lambda s p i minus p 0 by thermal conductivity of the dry layer. Okay. So, T 0 is the temperature at the surface of the slab and T i is the temperature at the interface of the frozen layer or the sublimation front lambda s is the latent heat of sublimation p i and p 0 as I have mentioned that the pressure at the sublimation front and uh, partial pressure of the water vapor we should say partial pressure at the sublimation front and partial pressure in the chamber. So, to summarize we can say that the drying time depends on maximum permissible surface temperature uh, T s, temperature at the sublimation front T i, initial and final moisture content W i and W f, bulk density of the solid, thickness of the slab and also the thermal conductivity of the dry layer. So, in this case it is dry layer because we have taken this assumption that it has uh, passing through the uh, dry layer only and it is inversely proportional to the permeability. So, we will stop here and in the next class we will continue with further explanation of the freeze drying equipments. Thank you.